still on my alcohol ink binge, so I thought I would turn on the camera and show you how I'm doing, what I'm doing, which is just, you know, typical textbook, I guess. Alcohol ink blobs. Um, I just really, really like this look, so that's what I'm doing, okay? And I'm doing this on fused vinyl, which I have unlimited access to. Okay, that's not fair, I know. You don't. I do have some available in the shop. Some, um, they're approximately nine by 12 sheets. These are in my Etsy shop, which you can find linked down below. And they're usually very dark. They're nine by 12, and right now they're $8 each. This is one of those things that I hope will come down in price as we get better equipment to be able to more efficiently fuse these things. Because, you know, I mean, $8 is kind of substantial for this. But it is a good size. You can actually make a traveler size, uh, traveler's notebook size um, journal out of it. So, you know, if you think about it, those sell for, what, $13.50? You can make your own for eight. <laughs> You know, that's actually kind of a bargain there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, anyway, that's, it's, um, that's the best I can do for now, but I do hope to be able to offer those at a better price later. And you don't get to choose what your colors or patterns are, and they're unfinished around the edges. So, you know, they're a little bit weird. But um, that way you can trim them, you know, as close to the fuse line as you possibly can to get the most square footage out of it. And most of these are dark. They're all kind of random and, you know, you get what you get, but most of them are dark, which means if you want to paint them, chances are you're going to need to put gesso on them. So that's what I did. I put a, just a thin, even coat of some cheap gesso on here before I put on my alcohol inks. Now this, this is kind of a, a double-edged sword because the gesso does help the inks to show up on the dark background, but alcohol is a solvent for gesso and pretty much anything you can put on here. Um, acrylic paint, gesso, even spray paint. If you used a spray paint on here, alcohol is a solvent. It's gonna wanna start to kind of lift it and it does, but that doesn't have to be a bad thing. You can work around it and I'll show you how. So if you don't have fused vinyl, you can use any kind of substrate that is alcohol ink friendly. You can use um, coated uh, cardstock. Heavier is better because I use a lot of alcohol and they'll tend to start to curl. Um, you can use any kind of non-porous substrate like um, ceramic uh, glazed tiles work really really great glass uh, plexiglass you know any anything like that you know because <laughs> we just all have tons of that stuff laying around the house <laughs> think outside the box Yupo paper Yupo does great even um, Tyvek like Tyvek envelopes you can open up an alcohol ink on Tyvek really well so options for you. Uh, what else you're going to need? You're going to need alcohol. Well, you're going to need alcohol inks, clearly. I've got a variety of, these are uh, pinata inks from Jacquard, and I will have um, links to what I show down below, and I have like an Amazon recommendation shop. It's an affiliate program Amazon has. And things that I get from Amazon, I can give you a direct link to that exact item. So that if you want what I got, you can go there and get it. Or shop around, get your own, get something similar. You know, whatever, up to you. I'm just saying, these are what I'm using. And these are old um, uh, pan or Tria inks. It was a Letraset brand, and they had them in the Pantone colors. These were awesome. But I got them back in the day. They don't exist anymore. But I'm, I'm going to use them up because there's still ink in there. So you're going to need some alcohol inks. You don't need this many. You're going to use like maybe, I don't know, for something like this, maybe five, six inks. You know, I'll show you. I'll tell you what colors I'm using as we go. Alcohol 
you can use regular isopropyl rubbing alcohol or surgical spirits 91 percent it does it does matter the percentage does matter the like the kind you get at the dollar stores is usually 70 something percent don't bother it does not work the same um, it, it, it kind of sort of will do a little bit as far as getting your inks to move around a little but the higher the percentage, the better. So if you can score you something, you know, in the high 80s to 90, whatever, I don't even know how it comes. But anyway, higher percentage is better. You can also use denatured alcohol. Um, trying to think of what this might be called in another country. I think it was methyl alcohol or something. This is the one that's used as a fuel or a cleaner and it usually comes in a thing like this. It has a completely different smell than isopropyl alcohol. They're, I mean they're both um, versions of alcohol but they're very different. You don't want to use this one on a cut. <laughs> this one you want to use in a lamp. <laughs> okay, for as long as I've been using alcohol inks, <laughs> and it's been a while, <laughs> I've always heard, use denatured alcohol. Use denatured alcohol. Always denatured alcohol. Okay, it's not something that I ever really had on hand, so I always just used rubbing alcohol, which worked fine. But I thought, all right, I'm missing out on something cool by not using the right alcohol that they recommend. So I bought this tin of denatured alcohol. I used it with my alcohol inks, and now I can clearly see that there is virtually no difference. <laughs> In the two <laughs> as far as the result that you get in fact okay there's a slight difference and I like this one better this one gives me really cool instant spots when I spray it out this one not so much I don't get the spots I just get more blending it's really weird so yeah they do kind of different things but I actually prefer the rubbing alcohol over denatured so don't feel like that this is something you have to have in order to do beautiful alcohol ink stuff. I, in my opinion, you don't. It's there. It's an option. So whatever. Anyway, I put my rubbing alcohol. I have it in this ginormous um, spray bottle. And then I have a little denatured alcohol in a cup. And then I have a variety of ways to apply it. You know, I've got the sprayer. I've got a... a fan brush, I've got a toothbrush to splatter it, I've got a pipette to drop it, and I even pulled out some q-tips just cuz, and then I have a package of these makeup wedges. So, you know, there you go. So we've got our substrate to work on, we've got our inks, we've got our alcohol, you're going to need some paper towels. Um, and this is not really an option. You're going to need paper towels, and I recommend paper towels as opposed to like a rag or something like that. There's a reason for that. I'll show you later. And then cover your workspace. And what I've got on here is a PVC shower curtain that I got at the Dollar Tree. So, you know, it was like a whole dollar, and it's folded up several times. I've got several layers, but it's great because I can, the alcohol ink will kind of stain it, but you can just spray alcohol on here and wipe up the excess when you're done. So it's easy to clean up and um, it is heat resistant. It's not heat proof. It's heat resistant. So with just normal heat gun running over it, it does fine. It doesn't melt up. Um, it's not like plastic wrap. It is PVC. And underneath it, I have a heat proof plate because I've still got my cutting mat um, on the table and I'm just too lazy to move it. So instead of moving it, I put a heat proof mat over it so I don't warp it. Don't judge me. Okay, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> All right, so let's just start putting some stuff down. And I like, okay, I don't really have a good orange-orange. The ones I do have are kind of, mm -hmm. So I've got this Pinata Havana Brown. And I'm going to start with it because it can kind of pretend to be orange. So I'm 
just going to kind of do that. And that was not a lot of ink. That was just a little squirt and dots. I mean, it was really very little. Oh, you're going to need a heat gun with this also. I forgot to mention. That's very important. I'm going to take my rubbing alcohol and then just kind of spray my dots to get them moving. Now this this dilutes and moves the alcohol ink, and it's also diluting and going to move the gesso underneath. So I just want to be aware of that and kind of careful with it. Sometimes it'll start to bubble up, you know, and I could see it lifting, and if I touched it, it would just split right open and I'd have vinyl underneath, so I don't touch it. That's the, that's the trick. Take your heat tool and then you can kind of move this around, spread it out, and what this also does is it is drying the ink, you know the alcohol is going to evaporate so it dries the ink and it will kind of stay put where you've got it. Now. As soon as we put more ink or alcohol on top of this, this ink we just put down is going to completely let go and start moving again. That's just what it does. And for that reason, it's kind of easy to um, accidentally make some muddy areas, right? Because it's not like, you know, okay, it's dry, now I can put a layer on top and this won't move. No, no, no. <laughs> it's going to move. But I've just kind of worked a way that I'm comfortable with where I can use lots of colors that normally don't play well together. I can use them right next to each other. Yes, they will start to blend and make mud, but there's a way around that. You want them to blend a little bit, otherwise you have all of these like separate blobs that just don't go together. They just look like, you know, they're like little congregating individual entities, and that's not what you want. You want a little bit of blending so that, you know, it looks more cohesive and finished, but you don't want mud. So, I'll show you how to do that. See, like this little area right here, that started to get a little muddy. I didn't remove it because it's it just shows the blending of the inks, if that makes sense. And it's not an offensive mud. There's good mud, there's bad mud. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I'll show you how you can get all of these, um, you know, put like purple and green right next to each other without them, you know, just breaking out into a fight. We don't want that. No fighting. Where was I? Oh, yes. I was trying to convince myself that this brown is orange. <laughs> That's where I was. <laughs> okay, let's just keep going. And now I'm going to use this. That's not what I want. Ugh. I'm trying not to use very many of the Tria colors because you can't get them. Um, so let me find a pinata that's about the same color. This is not really the same color, but it'll do. This is called pinata uh, Baja Blue. So it's kind of a teal color. And I'm going to sprinkle it around. I'm going to add my alcohol and heat it. Okay, this is a good time to show you what the paper towels are for. You see right here where, you know, when you heat it, it kind of goes, it kind of disperses out. And then around the edges is where it, it picks up the other color. 
you're kind of scooching both colors together out to the edge, you just kind of dab where it starts to look either too dark or a little muddy, and, and you just make it go away with your paper towel. <laughs> See, problem solved. And that is what keeps you from muddying up two colors that don't like to blend. So, that's the trick. Now let's do a green color. Ooh, this lime green, I don't know, it got weird. But I think the other one is too dark. Uh, rainforest green. I can't remember what these look like. Oh, well, that's not really too bad. Oh, that's, oh, I don't know though. It's got, this one's more blue, which could be a good thing. You know what? I'm going to go with this. This is way darker, but let's just do it. Let's do it in little single drop at a time, like a drop there and a drop there. Spray it. Got my paper towel ready to dab. That worked out pretty well. Do one there, one there. So now we've got orangey brown, blue, and green happening. Okay, now logically the next color we'll add is of course going to be purple. <laughs> logically. Okay, I've got a I don't have a purple in the pinatas. I have a purple in the um, Letraset colors, and this is just a purple purple. I don't even know how to describe it. But I'm going to put it up here with the orange and green <laughs> that it just loves so much. <laughs> Let's see if we can make it behave. Oh yeah, that's nice. And you may feel like, you know, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm dabbing off tons and tons of ink. But remember, you're not. We're just putting down like one or two drops and then adding alcohol. This is just a bunch of alcohol diluted alcohol ink. So don't feel like you're wasting all this ink. You're not. It's just, you know, a drop here, a drop there, and then lots of alcohol.
trying to decide. I think I want a little blue, just, you know, blue, blue. Uh, sapphire blue. I think that's what I want. I'm not sure. And, you know, I'm not a fan of white space unless I make it on purpose. So, let's just see if this is truly what I'm wanting. I could be mistaken. I don't know. Looking pretty good. Yeah, I think that's what I wanted. Okay, I am quite delighted with this. Now, I think all it needs is just something kind of neutral to bring it all together, which for me lately has been this Senorita Magenta, which is like a neon magenta. <laughs> it's my neutral. <laughs> and I'm going to do it in small uh, areas. Because I really just want kind of almost a starburst effect here. I'll show you. Yeah, a little neon just brings it all together. This, I think, looks pretty darn awesome. I'm going to set this aside to fully dry and show you something else. Sometimes I get a little heavy-handed, <laughs> like I did over here. And um, I was just going to kind of erase it with alcohol and start over. You know, it, the alcohol kind of stains the vinyl, but you can clear it off enough to kind of start over. But then I started clearing it off, and I'm kind of liking the, the sort of erased areas. And all I did to get that, I took one of these little makeup sponge things, dipped it in alcohol. This just happens to be denatured. Either one will work. And then I literally started kind of erasing. And this had an acrylic paint on it to begin with, and they were just colors that I wasn't happy with, didn't work, and that's why I alcohol inked over it. So I have to be careful putting the alcohol on like this because I can feel it kind of getting sticky. It's lifting the acrylic paint. But as long as I don't rub too vigorously, it seems to be doing okay. And I don't know, I don't know, I don't know where to go from here. I should leave it. Should I add maybe some metallic to it? I have a gold metallic. Okay, so there is a do-over that just has all kinds of potential. And I'm going to let this dry because the, the acrylic is a little sticky. So let's let this dry and then we'll revisit. So what do you do with all these paper towels that you're loading up with alcohol ink and, and uh, alcohol? Well, you can leach the color back out of them. And sometimes it's kind of muddy and dull, but sometimes it's really pretty. I actually think these are pretty. They're muted, but you can still see the individual colors. So this is just, this is actually scraps of sticker paper. But, you know, I think any good quality paper or cardstock would work. It's, it's extremely smooth. 
but not coated. Let me find a good, let's try that one. There's a lot of color going on there. So what I do, this is completely dry because it was from several days ago. I just spray it with alcohol, both sides to kind of reactivate the ink. And then do this. And see what happens. Oh, see, I got lots of pretty color out of that. So, yeah, there's like actually still usable stuff in your paper towels. Don't throw them away. Okay. Now, eventually, they're going to get to where you can't get anything else out of them. Then you can throw them away, but not yet. And you can also, I've not had very good luck with this, but, you know, I've got all of this stuff here. It usually just ends up too muddy. But let's try it. Well, that is not bad at all. Okay, another advantage of using a surface like this, or even like a non-stick craft mat, that would work. See, you can still get some coolness out of it. So alcohol inks, you know, I think I got these at Joann's online and they were like $2.19 each. And I, I can't remember if that was a sale or their regular price, but they're, I think, a half ounce. Uh, yeah, one half fluid ounce for $2. You know, that's, that's a small amount of ink for not not a huge price, but you know, if you multiply it by like like a two ounce bottle of craft paint, you know, that's okay, this is half an ounce. So you double it, that's an ounce, that'd be four dollars. It'd be like eight dollars. <laughs> Why don't you see me zip through that math? <laughs> so, you know, price per fluid ounce, it's kind of pricey in my book. But considering that you're just using one little drop at a time, and even your cleanup um, paper towels are usable, you know, that just makes it an even better value. Ooh, look, this, the alcohol has had time to really soak in and loosen those colors. Wow. Okay, that's just cool with literally no effort <laughs> and something that, you know, with a different type of paint, you might have just thrown this away. But with alcohol inks, you can, there's still, there's still potential in there. Yeah, so don't, um, don't panic about the price if you're thinking, oh, they're a little bit you know, a little bit outside my budget. Save up, get, get you a few to play with because you really can get a lot of mileage out of them. Okay? Now, the inevitable question, well, what are you gonna do with it? <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, that's not the one we just made. Where's the one we just made? You know, I really do think this needs some gold or something. I've got, and I, to be honest, I'm not loving the gold pinata, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try to love it. All right, let's just see. I'm not going to put it on like I did the others. I think what I'm going to do is I'm shaking this up because like the gold and the white, they've got a heavy pigment in them, and you can get the pigment residue or sediment can get on your thing and be quite irritating. There we go. See, it's got the little ball in it. Okay, let's see if I, I got that one. 
because I'm thinking about doing something like that. Dipping my brush in alcohol. Well, that's not too bad. Okay, let me let me let me explain where I got that idea. I've been making lots of stuff in typical Shannon fashion. I don't make one or two. I make four thousand. <laughs> So I've got a bunch of ATCs. Now these are all gifts with purchase from my Etsy shop. If you buy a custom keeper, um, not anything else, but if your order includes at least one custom keeper, you get some kind of little art tile or ATC that I have made. And so for that reason, I have to be able to make a lot of things with not a lot of time or effort. This is perfect. So the other day, I made a beautiful sheet. In fact, I made it my cover photo on my Facebook, my personal Facebook page. And then I cut it up into tiles like this. Now these, I will finish the edges. I'll go along the edge with a Sharpie just to kind of make them look finished. But then I think they're beautiful like they are. I could resin them, but you know, since they're little gifts with purchase and I need a lot of them, I'm not gonna do that because of time. But I did some over here, and some of these just didn't have colors that I was thrilled with. Some were okay, but some I was just like, meh, you know, not great. So to kind of make them more interesting, I just went around the blobs with a fine gold paint pen. And I used a Posca, has a gold fine tip paint pen was laying here and now I can't find it. You know, just trust me, they do. <laughs> and that's what I used. And I just sort of outlined some of the, um, you know, where the ink colors meet up against each other. I just outlined them. Not every single one of them. I just picked a few. And then I think that makes a really cool kind of, I don't really even know what, but I love the way it looks. Right? So that's what I was kind of doing here. And you know, there's way too many blobs for me to go around and outline them. But chances are I'm going to cut this into tiles. So I can put this ink in lots of different places because, you know, tiles are small. And I just want a little gold something. To show up on them so that's what I'm doing that's why I'm making those weird kind of swirly lines and some of them may accidentally be following along the ink lines some may not doesn't matter because you know tiles <laughs> no one can see the overall design it does not matter and like with the other inks other alcohol inks this gold is gonna lift what's underneath it Apparently it's going to get clogged easy too. Uh, but I'm just moving it gently and trying not to overdo with the alcohol that I add. My brush is just kind of damp, not really soaked. Yeah, I don't want a, like a super defined line, just almost like a crack in granite or something. Yeah, think, think that. I've got this, I wonder if this Q-tip would do better. Okay, I think that'll work. I normally cut two inch square tiles and I think that'll give me a little color and a little gold on each tile. And that looks really good. So, 
you know, that's really all there is. It's easy. It's, you know, some alcohol ink, alcohol, a heat gun, a paper towel. And then you can use any colors that you want right up next to each other. You don't have to worry too much about them uh, getting muddy. When they get muddy, you just dab the mud with a paper towel, it disappears, and then somehow it magically unmuds itself so that later <laughs> you can dip paper in it <laughs> and get, you know, even more really cool stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking um, we all need to be playing more with our alcohol inks, right? So give it a try, see what you think, let me know. Um, if you'd like to join my Facebook group to share pictures of what you're doing, that's usually the easiest way. Be sure and tag me in those pictures so that I won't miss them. And that is all the end.